the latest in skill acquisition and performance research from PerceptionAction.com. Can perceptual motor training be used to reduce the chance an athlete will get a knee injury playing sports? In a paper from the recent International Society of Biomechanics and Sport Conference, Tidman and colleagues compared two types of training to a control group using a group of Australian rules football players. The training involved watching 3D videos of approaching players in one-on-one, two-on-two, or three-on-three scenarios. In the uncoupled training, participants indicated verbally which way they would move to evade. We call this uncoupled because we've broken the link between perceiving and acting here. In the coupled training, players executed a sidestep or cross-cut maneuver to evade the tacklers in the video. Pre- and post-training, motion capture was used on the field to assess various factors including total knee activation and maximum rotation. The coupled training led to a significantly greater decrease in one of the key factors, the peak knee valgus, as compared to the other groups, suggesting that it may be an effective method for reducing injury risk. Keep them coupled, my friends. Are skilled rock climbers better at focusing their attention? Well, I should hope so. But in a paper just published in Frontiers of Psychology, Garado Palmino and colleagues actually studied this question. A group of skilled climbers were asked to self-rate their climbing ability and perform two attention tests. One was essentially a vigilance test in which a stimulus, little white dots, appeared on a computer screen infrequently, and participants were asked to press a button when they saw it. The second was a choice reaction time test in which they were required to press a button as fast as possible depending on the color of the object on the screen. There was a significant positive correlation between the self-reported climbing ability and the accuracy in the vigilance attention test, leading the authors to suggest that training on this test might improve climbing ability. Whoa there! As I've said in previous editions of this news, having some perceptual cognitive tests relate to skill in some sport does not imply training on that test variable will transfer to sports performance. For example, maybe the relationship found here was due to confidence, which would result in both higher ratings of someone's skill and better attention test performance. Also, there seems to be a surface validity issue here for me. Why would sustaining your attention on an unchanging scene be useful in climbing? As on the rocks, we need to proceed cautiously with these kind of findings. Finally today, there's a very new interesting looking book coming soon called Bernstein's Construction of Movement, Original Text and Commentaries. For those that don't know, Nikolai Bernstein is one of the most important thinkers in the area of motor control and motor learning. However, his work is still being translated from Russian and discovered by researchers. From the website, well written in 1947, Bernstein's book is anything but obsolete making this English translation and accompanying commentaries an invaluable text. The translated original text presents in detail Bernstein's views on the evolutionary history of biological movement and his multi-level hierarchical scheme of the construction of movement in higher animals, including humans. The following commentaries address Bernstein's personality, the history of the book, and current views on different aspects of neuroscience covered in Bernstein's text. Ultimately, they present a book within the book, to showcase how Bernstein's heritage was developed over the past years. Definitely one I'll be picking up. That's the latest from the world of skill acquisition. Find links to the articles I mentioned today on my blog page and learn much more by subscribing to the Perception in Action podcast at perceptionaction.com. Have a great day and keep them coupled.